Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going through the embryonic formation of the gastric system with you uh, by annotating this video that we found online. Uh, the URL can be seen up here if you want to go watch it. Uh, so it's just kind of a self-explanatory video, but it helps to have somebody walk you through it. So we're going to start it here and see how it goes. There's no volume. So right now this is a three-week-old three embryo. We are in the uterus. Um, we are forming, this is, it's going to go through and it'll label it here, but we have the different colors represent our endoderm, ectoderm, and mesoderm. Uh, and this is the uh, villon, I believe, or the choroid. Let's see here. Yeah, the chorion. Okay, so here we have all these labels. So this black area here above your trilaminar disc is your amniotic cavity. Uh, up here, it's labeling where your oral pharyngeal membrane is beginning, your allantois, your colloquial membrane, which is the beginning of the anus, and the umbilical vesicle, uh, otherwise called the yolk sac. And then up here, you can see here's the connecting stock that connects the embryo to the chorion. So we're going to click play, and we'll let it keep going here. So it's going to animate. So here, it's showing that we have the primitive gut tube is forming. So we have the pericardial cavity is right here, and the heart tube starts to form, but we have the formation, or the beginning of the formation of the foregut, the midgut, which is going to be right here, and then the hindgut, which is down here. So it's going to continue to form, it's forming, and what's going to happen is this yolk stock is going to get pinched off here. And so now we have more labels so once again, we have the foregut, the midgut, and the hindgut, and the allantois, or allantois, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, and this is part of the umbilical um, uh, way that the embryo can get rid of waste in the uterus. Uh, and so we have here that the midgut is the primary point where the umbilical sac is going to be pinched off. So we click play and it's still going through here and it's going to reform and this is going to show this is a transverse cut as labeled here. So we're cutting it down from front to back. If you were to lie it down on the table, we're cutting it right in half. So here you can see it's labeling an amniotic cavity, the yolk sac, and here's the trilaminar disc is in here. So it's going to go, and these two arms right here, you could think of them, are going to come down, and they're going to pinch off after it's forming our neural tube. And we have here the beginning of our pleural cavities, where our lungs are going to be. But so now the two arms here are coming down, and they're pinching off the yolk stock to make the primitive gut tube, which is right here. There we go. It's a magical animation. So it's showing you the gut tube is held by the dorsal mesentery, which is right here, which we get into the omentums later uh, in the course. But So we have the intraembryonic uh, colon, which is this area surrounding the embryonic gut tube, uh, as well as the other neural tube and various inner organs here. A couple of them are liver buds as well, I believe. So now we actually can see that we have an embryo. Here's the head and eye coming all the way down. Here is the, remember what this is right here? So this is going to be around the belly button. So this is going to be the allantois. And it hasn't labeled it yet, but it will. So you can see the esophagus is up here. Here's the part of the pharynx, and this is going to be the nasal pharynx up here, oral pharynx. And then this is going to drop down into your throat. Uh, and then the respiratory, the lungs, the trachea actually is a deviation from the esophagus or the gut tube. So you have your respiratory bud right here. Stomach is going to be just a little bit lower, and then we get into your duodenum and everything else that's below it. And we're we'll going to zoom in here on the development of the stomach. The stomach's pretty easy to understand for development. So as it said just a second ago, let me let it label, this is a, a cut from the transverse cut just like we had on the uh, couple slices ago where we're looking from the head and we're looking down. So you can see here, here's the primitive gut tube. 
Here is the part of the neural tube, or the spinal cord that's forming. Here's your aorta. Part of, well, the primitive aorta, I guess that we're going to not go into that in this lecture. Uh, your two vagus nerves, you know that the left vagus and the right vagus, where they end up in the adult, is based on how the stomach rotates. Uh, we'll go into that here in a second. And then here's your liver. You can see your falciform ligament forming. And then you have your dorsal mesentery here and your ventral mesentery there, which is holding it to the front and the back, respectively. So here we go. So watch how the stomach is rotating clockwise. So you see, so here is the left vagus and here's the right vagus and it's going to continue to rotate clockwise so let me let these labels form so the stomach we know rotates clockwise and that's why we find the left vagus nerve on top of the stomach and the right vagus nerve is behind the stomach right so here's your liver We know this is going to be your spleen over here. So this is your falciform ligament. So your falciform ligament is what connects your liver to your ventral mesentery. You have your spleen over here, followed by your pancreas. Here are your kidneys. And we're at the level of the stomach again. So here's the right vagus nerve, and this is the left one on top, just because of that clockwise rotation. Now here's how the stomach is formed from the right side. So we're looking at the right side. We're cutting it in half, and we're looking. Here's a little diagram down here. So the aorta is on the back side of the wall. You have your dorsal mesentery, which is connecting the stomach back to the, abdo or the uh, dorsal abdomen wall. And then here's the stomach again. So it's just a little swelling in this primitive gut tube. And what's going to happen is you're going to have this outpouching or this growth. It's kind of like a little sag. There it goes. So here's what the stomach is actually going to form into. And what happens is the dorsal aspect of the stomach grows faster than the ventral aspect of the stomach. And that's why you have the greater curve and the lesser curve of the stomach is it, it just kind of bulges out. So here it goes. <clears throat> so let me go through and let this label. So we have, here's your esophagus coming into your stomach with the greater curvature, the lesser curvature, your pyloric sphincter in your pylorus, and then you have your duodenum, or your duodenum, however you pronounce it. Uh, then your greater omentum is on the bottom, and your greater omentum is two layers of mesentery, and your lesser omentum is going to be up here. It's going to form on the top of your stomach. It connects the lesser part of your stomach <coughs> to the liver along uh, I should note that you have your pancreas buds forming up here and your spleen as well. So we're in the four-week-old embryo, and we're going to go in and look at the view of the gallbladder being developed. So there's a lot of labels here to know, but just always remember it's mid-gut or uh, foregut, mid-gut, hindgut. So once again, the thing about the intestines that are it's different is these also rotate clockwise, but they rotate 180 degrees. And we're just going to fast forward through this. It's just kind of showing our liver forming, and we're going to zoom in here. Here we go. So everything's labeled here. We know that the gallbladder is the storage place for bile, which is made by the liver. So the gallbladder receives bile through the cystic duct. So now it's going to show here how the stomach is going to rotate. 
And then we have our pancreas buds are here, and they're going to actually rotate around and fuse together, but we'll get into that here, I believe, in a second. Right here, where we talk about the pancreas developing. So the pancreas is unique in that, let's go here and let it label. We have a dorsal bud, and a, here's the dorsal bud back here, and the ventral bud, and here is the foregut and the midgut. So the foregut midgut separation is at the second part of the duodenum. The duodenum or the duodenum is separated into four parts. The second part, the division between the first and second part is the division between the foregut and the midgut. So what's going to happen here is our ventral and our dorsal pancreatic bud, the ventral bud's going to move, it's going to rotate back around, and it's going to fuse with the dorsal bud. And it'll show us here in this next view. Right here. So this ventral bud's going to rotate all the way back around and it's going to fuse just like that. Yep. And here's the duodenum right here. Halfway there, and there it goes, all the way it fuses. And now you have your accessory pancreatic duct along with your main pancreatic duct. Okay, and we'll let it keep going here. Almost done. So we're cutting it in half again, and we're looking right down the bottom, right down towards the bottom, I should say. So once again, here is the gut tube, or this is going to be the duodenum in this case, with your pancreas, kidneys, aorta, neural tube. You can start to see the or the uh, vertebrae are forming. So this is just showing the clockwise rotation once again. So it's showing you basically which part of the duodenum as well as the pancreas are going to be retroperitoneal versus uh, intraperitoneal. And so the uh, second, third, and fourth part of the duodenum are retroperitoneal. Now we're zooming in here on the rest of the esophag or the uh, uh, small intestines. Okay, a lot to look at. So your aorta, your aorta again. Here's your spleen, your pancreas, gallbladder, liver, stomach, and then this is what they call the midgut loop. And your midgut is supplied by your superior mesenteric artery. Your foregut is supplied by your celiac trunk. Hindgut is supplied by your inferior mesenteric. We're going to go in here and it's just going to show you that this is a counterclockwise term. However, it depends on the direction or the way you're looking at it because the way I look at it is if you are standing behind, so if you're standing over here and you're looking forward through the person as if he was in anatomical position, then this is actually rotating clockwise. So everything looks like it rotates clockwise. However, if you're looking at it from this position, they are showing this animation here from the front because you can see that the part of this yellow part of the intestines is on top, the superior mesenteric is in the middle, and the lower part of these small intestine is on the bottom. So it all depends on where you look at it. Just note that the uh, lower part of the small intestine, so this pinkish area here is going to go on top of this yellow part of the small intestine. And you'll see that here. So there it goes. It's starting to rotate. Now it's 90 degrees. There's another 90, so now we're at 180. We're going to do one more rotation. Okay, so now we can see here we have our colon that's developing. I don't like this animation right now because it's saying the stomach 
and the duodenum, or this part of the small intestines, are actually the same type of embryonic tissue when they're not, because remember we said the stomach is foregut, while the second, third, and fourth part of the duodenum is midgut. And it looks here like they're all the same when that's not really the case, so we're going to see here. This little guy right here, what do you guys think this is? It's the appendix. So this is going to rotate all the way down here like that, boom. Now we have our small intestines. We have the cecum appendix, ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid colon with the rectum and the anus, which it's gonna label right here, there it goes. So now we're looking at the fixation or how the intestines are uh, attached with the mesentery. So basically the way to remember this is your ascending, descending, uh, but not your transverse, which is right here, colon. Your ascending and your descending are retroperitoneal. Your transverse is going to be intraperitoneal. Okay, because you can see how, if you imagine if you're looking at this in a 3D perspective, the ascending and descending are kind of back glued to the back wall of the body, whereas this transcending or transverse kind of like comes forward or out towards the belly button almost and comes around here arcs and then it kind of goes back towards the back. So it's actually coming through the mesentery tissue. So we'll watch here. And we're going to cut it in half. There we go. So we just saw the descending and ascending colon, like I said, are fused. They're on the back wall. So this is kind of the back, the dorsal aspect of the embryo. So here's a sagittal view. Here's the greater momentum, which connects the lesser curvature of the stomach up here. And it kind of encompasses the pancreas and attaches to the dorsal mesentery part of the wall. Your duodenum is right here, uh, and then this is part of your small intestines right here. Here's your lesser omentum up here on the top of the stomach on the lesser curvature. So what's going to happen here is this omentum is going to fuse over here with the transverse colon omentum of the tissue. There it goes right there. So now we have one greater momentum there. So what, remember when we said yesterday or a little earlier, the vitellin duct and the allantois are where the waste is kind of leaving the primitive way that it leaves in the uh, embryo. The cloaca is your first primitive anus or primitive rectum where the, the fecal matter is going to leave. It's going to develop into those. Uh, and then here's your urorectal septum, which is going to further divide and it's going to separate out the rectum from the urine or the bladder, the ureters, as you'll see here coming up. So now you can see that we have completely isolated and we have separated here the rectum <clears throat> from the urogenital sinus, which is going to be where the urine is contained or where it passes through. And that, I believe, is the end of this video here. So it's just a little way, a little easier to have somebody help you walk through it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my other ones uh, if this really helped. Thanks.